Let's go. But take a second here, okay? <laughs> Bianca's back. We're back with episodes. Uh, Bianca's back. And yeah, well, because the last one I did. We're like, back. Two, yo, everybody's back. Because the last two times. Yeah, have you made the, two without me? Hmm? No, I've just made one without you. Oh. So here we go. We got this. We got finals going on. But that doesn't mean Callum wasn't <laughs> watching UFC. And also. The amount of excuses we have for you guys. Oh, well, every single week is excuses. But get ready for just direct all gear no game content constantly throughout the summer you better believe that and you also better okay i didn't i that's kind of that's extreme no it is it is an extreme statement but i pr- can hold yourself promise accountable you, i i need to start holding myself accountable because i literally have been probably th- one of the worst and most unreliable sources of <laughs> mma news that you could possibly <laughs> find but also the thing is as kellen is watching uh just just feel my pain here a little bit all right as kellen is watching last week's car between volkov and rosenstrike oh how would i oh how would i have <laughs> loved to just break down each and every one of these fights on here ready jeff Molina versus jogos oh, oh painful to not be able to talk about jogos one of my favorite fighters benoit saint denis had one of my he had my favorite fighter from last year even though it was probably took shaved seven years off his life against um Zaleski dos santos but i was so pumped to see ben wasson denis get a freaking <laughs> dub and then my grandma was w- w- watching him with me and she's she she's like french and stuff so she was down with that and then also dan argetta i freaking interviewed this man and he had his ufc debut against Jamin, damon jackson oh so why didn't you make a cart or a video because i don't know if you remember but i probably slept for like a cumulative like four hours on like thursday oh. wednesday and thursday doing finals assignments yeah so now but we're set to go and then also we had zaruka dasha fight odie osborne oh moff sarvloyev this is the one that really freaking killed me versus dan Ige. i wish i could have talked about that one and then the main event is obviously fantastic but you know we can't really live in the past we just have to we're gonna it, it, that's the, that's basically that's our like mo is we talk about things that happened two <laughs> weeks ago but before we even get into that me and bianca we watched um before we get into any mma oh we have we have a time um, limit here too but we, what did we watch last night we well, have to give our, our annual movie rating since we're not back. just what we watch but last night but we've been gone so long we always give our input on shows and stuff too so last night we watched jackass mm-hmm uh forever yes and that was intense it was insane yes no one question i have for you is because you francis gone was on there and he punched that one cat in the balls and i don't that guy the cup test shot those is probably the worst ones well it was so funny too because he thought that he was getting hit by a lightweight so he was like okay with it and he <laughs> and then francis shows up he's like you said i was gonna get hit by a lightweight i know and we're late to the party with jackass forever too because this came out a while ago <laughs> okay. yeah i know but, but uh, it's okay what's the one stunt that you do you would do that wouldn't be too outrageous but what you would do like what is something that you would set up that you for would yourself? do with it sure. um probably the i could see you doing some of the ones that the girl did like getting hit by the scorpion no. or licking the taser no. i think you would do good no i think Those you could were do intense. it hence i would never ever scorpions are one of my like you wouldn't even let the scorpion get to fears. you no i would probably do the bear because it was cute <laughs> oh yeah the bear was then the guy was like i gotta go in. i gotta the go guy in. was kind of nervous but no actually i'd probably just do the ones at the beginning where they were just their human ramps where the guys are doing skateboards. Oh yeah, yeah, and they were going over the top of them, and I you feel just like get that smushed. Wasn't too bad, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. But I think the one that I would do that it would be terrible, the but I, I would definitely do it because I feel like the 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 pain is high, but the amount of you getting injured isn't very high. I would do the the skateboard guillotine one where you put your shins out and then have the drop the skateboard down because you're not gonna like die from it. But you're not gonna get your balls that pinched. In, that wasn't you're not having to do necessarily. That was like the most mild out of all of yeah, them. Yeah, but you can't make a sound. I think I could. If, the, you, if I had no to do one, that's the to, one I would do. There's no way you wouldn't make a sound. No, I know that. But I think that's the only one of the whole show that I could do. She I couldn't do with bugs. Taser. I couldn't deal with anything. She licked a taser and the guy got bit by a snake on his face twice, twice. <laughs> and didn't make a sound. A and didn't make a sound. <laughs> Poopies is an absolute intense. gun. But what would you do though? 
I already said I would do the skateboard one. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's such a lame hill. one. You just wanted to lay at the bottom of it. <laughs> what else was there? I don't know. The fart Getting one. Getting shot the out of the can was would easy. Be fun. I know what one I don't want to do is the bowl. And what did we do in one of all gear no games first ever podcast was ranking um, the toughest sports ever. And bull riding. And was bull on riding right. was like number one for me. Or, or was it the bowl it riding was, was like top five for me? I think. Yeah. But we've also been watching the new Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I just finished Stranger Things. Kellen is not a Stranger Things um, fanatic like me, but he did watch one episode, which happened to be this the finale of part one, season mm-hmm. four. So I've convinced him to watch part two of season four, July 1st. So he's hopping on a little bit on the train. Yeah, it's okay. I, I don't know if I would get into anyone else, but I just want to see the one girl fight the other guy that, that the demon the guy dude he's not a demon he's terrifying uh he's zero one technically he's number one yeah but my movie rating for jackass forever is i, 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 give, I give it around 80s with jackass is jackass movie it's fun watching things that you would never do i, I would never do i'm upset that you watched the other one without me i wanted the to see 4. it 4.5 on netflix but um yeah i would give that out of like entertainment level it was definitely in the 80s so yeah but we got a stack show for you today we're gonna basically i want to run through i mean we're not gonna run through all of them but we got the home versus viera card which had some sick fighters on it that i kind of want to so this is the one that already fast happened run by two weeks ago and then Volkov, <laughs> Volkov versus Rosenstrike. And then we obviously have Prochka versus Teixeira. Let me just bolt through some of this sucker really fast, okay? Jailton Almeida comes back. Okay, so I want to talk about Jailton Almeida really fast because he was on that home versus Vieira card. And I, I already, I made that one thing where I talked about my, my, fi- my favorite. It was my, I forget which one. It was, I made an episode on the most, or the best prospects that we've had so far. And they were featured on this card. But there was Chidi and Jukawani, and then there was Gilton Almeida on their card. So, and then there was no. I think that was it. That was it. It was just Gilton Almeida versus um, Parker Porter, and then um, Chidi and Jukawani versus Dusko Todorovic. But I just want to go back here for a second, okay? Because for this episode, I also made my um, top unranked fighters Mm -hmm. that are like in each division okay but let me just since we're on the topic of jalaton almeida i just want to say jalaton almeida for my heavyweight and light heavyweight portion of this um my rankings he is by far the scariest unranked dude at both light heavyweight and heavyweight the way he came in against danilo marquez and just ran through him the way he came in against parker porter who was on like a three fight win streak and then just took him down and then dismantled him dude he got a rear he sunk in a rear naked choke this man i'm gonna say it right now we are in that living in a very interesting time because i think giles and almeida he just he just got a new fight um he just signed a new one is against uh shamil abdurakimov and abdurakimov he's ranked he's like number 12 in the current light he- light i mean heavyweight rankings and he just lost to like chris Dawkins or something but what I'm saying is Jalaton Almeida is so special and we're living in such a sick time because Jalaton Almeida is the Hamzat Chemaev of light heavyweight and heavyweight division because just like Hamzat, he can run through and be the best at both divisions. But Jalaton, I don't know what it is, dude, but this man, I don't see anybody stopping him. Like even Tom Aspinall, bro, if you bring him in, Against Tom Aspinall, some of the top guys, he can strike with them, and he you can't take the guy down, and he's going to take your back and submit you. So I'm just saying, I'm making this comparison. I don't know. I know it's a bold prediction, but I think Jalaton Almeida is going to be the Hamza Chemayev, and it's going to be crazy. We're not going to I don't know if we're going to see... I don't know. Like We've never really seen a guy fluctuate from light heavyweight and heavyweight, and I think that he has a home at heavyweight for sure because I don't think some of the guys that stand and bang heavyweight have the grappling ability to... like hang with him on the ground because as soon as things go awry on the feet he's just going to take you down and destroy you and he's going to work his way up in the top five and especially if he gets this dub over shamil abder i mean there's no reason why he shouldn't be fast tracked along with like tai tui but i mean tai tui Vasa was in the ufc for a while this was like jalatin's second fight in the ufc but i'm just saying dude this guy is the hamzat chamayev of lightweight light heavyweight and heavyweight and it's his rise to the top is going to be insane especially given the fact that now we have some exciting things happening in the light heavyweight division that we'll get to but 
that's what I want to talk about. Jalton Almeida for my heavyweight and light heavyweight. He's the next, he's that Hamza Chimaev level guy there, but also he is the scariest unranked dude for both the divisions. Cause I was going through, I was like, who's the scariest for lightweight, light heavyweight, who's scariest for heavyweight. It's the singular guy. He made my job really easy. Okay. <laughs> but I just can't say enough about Jalton Almeida. He has the Hamza Chimaev effect. And when you see him fight, you're like, dude, this guy doesn't have a lot of holes in his game. Okay. And then same with Chini Jukwani for my middleweights, bro. He is my middleweight banger because he, uh, he's my middleweight, uh, scariest on rank. His Dushko was doing good. Like, Dushu was doing good in their fight, and then he catches him with an elbow, and it's all over. And he has the attributes to, like, I, dude, he, I think he can grapple, and he obviously can strike with the best of them. And so, you at middleweight, everybody compares you to, like, the Jared Cannoneers and the, like, um, Israel Adesanya's and Sean Strickland's and stuff. And I think when you look at middleweights, you have to be able to, like, compete with those guys and have the attributes because a lot of the middleweights, I feel like, they're big, strong guys, but they can't necessarily, like, I don't know they don't you just see you see them fighting they're good but you just are like i don't know if this guy can go to the next level but watching chidi and jukawani it's like dude this guy he's one shot away from beating anybody in the division basically and mm-hmm. so that's what i think separates him from the pack and that's why i picked him as my middleweight like absolute savage scariest unranked dude and should be ranked within the very near future and then on that i guess like i'll just finish the list because so I have the light heavyweight heavyweights. I was gonna save this for the end, but screw it, it's fine. Because it's all right. Because it, it's like doesn't make sense to talk about yeah. them twice or whatever. Yeah. You know? So, and then for my uh, welterweight, okay, I put D Rod because I know he had like a hand injury, but Daniel Rodriguez, like we say all the time, he looks just my like uncle, her uncle. But he's an absolute killer. I mean, he isn't ranked yet. I don't think. I don't think so. Because I we I intentionally try to do these podcasts on tuesdays because that's when the new rankings come out but daniel rodriguez i'm telling you dude boxing he can he uh, in his last couple fights like preston parsons and kevin lee i mean he just pops you with his jab dude and everything is so mm-hmm. firm he doesn't even throw like a hundred percent everything's just so straight and crisp and he just splits your guard and kills you but then when people try to take you down when guys try to take him down he just stuffs he has such strong hips so and that's like we've said crucial against when you have to fight guys like yeah. Bilal Muhammad or Hamza Chamayev having good takedown defense is essential especially when you're a good striker because you're striking like we know dude it's useless when you're off your back like we saw against Vicente Luque he couldn't stop a good time takedown from Bilal Muhammad but I mean even though D-Rod he is like in his mid-30s or whatever I still think he's got a lot of juice in the tank gonna be a late bloomer you know but he's just so tough so I picked him for my most dangerous 170 unranked guy and then for most dangerous 155-er, it has to be Claudio Poyes because the way he's basically ran through his last opponents in between um, Gritzmacher and Clay Guida, who are fantastic wrestlers, the way he just slips and just scrambles and the way he just transitions into submission attempt after submission attempt is insane. And also his... Um, I don't know, like his fire IQ, like when he's striking or whatever, he just does a really good job of mixing it up and setting up his takedowns. And he just is a really well-rounded fighter. So I'm put, picking Claudio, Claudio Poyes. And then similar to Claudio at 140, because um, Claudio is the 155-er, my most dangerous 145-er is by far Charles Jardin because the way he beat Lando Venata, who is, I mean, gave guys like Tony Ferguson problems at lightweight. I mean, Lando Venata is an absolute killer. And for Charles Jardin to pull off like a guillotine, I think he did. And then he absolutely blossomed into an absolute manimal against Andre Ewell, dude. I think Charles Jordan, even though there is so many absolute killers at Featherweight, I picked him amongst others because I just think that he has the brightest future. And then he, like, he's he he's, has just the absolute perfect opportunity set up against him because remember the fight against Billy Quarantillo and Shane Burgos? It was on that, like, Chandler versus... The one that was crazy? Yeah, it was absolutely yeah. wild. Yeah. Ch- Charles Jordan, he just got his fight with Shane Burgos, and Burgos is 14. So it'll be Charles Jordan's opportunity to crack into the top 15 of um, featherweight. So Dude, I'm just... so excited even your neck turns red. Oh, my God. You're, like, burning up. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm so- I'm solid. Do I look red? Like, <laughs> no, am I bad? like, your chest looks like you're, like, freaking having a... No. Oh, oh, oh. oh. And your chest looks like you're having like a. No, I'm just pumped because Shane Burgos and uh, and Shane Burgos is about to get another 50k check because he's gonna have a fantastic dance partner. <laughs> you get so excited. In Charles Dordain, so 
Charles Jordan can beat you from everywhere, and I'm just pumped because I'll never forget his Andre Ewell performance where he just yelled and became just an absolute freak in nature in front of our eyes. So, yeah, I'm pumped for Charles Jordan because he's finally getting his opportunity to crack in the top 15, and he's dangerous from everywhere. He throws acrobatic, like Michelle Pajera, like kicks. He can crack you, and he can take you down and obviously finish you on the ground. Crack you. Okay, 135ers. Did I even? Okay, this is the thing with the 135ers is the unranked guys. You can basically make a whole two divisions, basically. So I was like going through and I was like, yeah, dude, do I even bother with picking one? Because everybody's got their like, oh, Adrian Giannis, Tony Kelly, all these dudes that are in Jonathan Martinez, all these dudes that are unranked and stuff. And I feel like I've already harped on that enough. But Bianca is very familiar with this guy. And I know he he's having it. Uh, He's having his UFC debut soon, but I forget who. It, I'm familiar with him, but he's not even in the de- oh, UFC yet. Oh, you're UFC. Extre- you're, you're, UFC. You're extremely familiar with him. Let's hear it. He goes by the name of Pretty Ricky Tercios. Oh yes. Yes, and he. Okay, I want. I got to look this up really fast. I was just on his profile, but um, who's My he? Who's he lined up boy. to fight? Oh, he's find up lined up to fight Eamon Zahabi. Okay, Eamon's good. This is a good matchup for him, but. Ricky Tercios, I think, even though the, he basically has the experience. I mean, he's fought Dan Argetta, who just fought in the UFC, and we sh- showed how good he is against Damon Jackson up a weight class, okay? And then he's had to fight Brady Heastead, who's a young, good fighter. Ludovic Shulinian, who's like a legit grappler. He got all that experience within the um, Ultimate Fighter tournament. But pretty Ricky, he's the same as like Javid Boshrat, all those guys, elevates his opponent's game, baby. And it doesn't matter who's fighting him. He finds a way to like implement his style uh-huh. and like kind of play into the game of the other guy. And just like it just makes for a really good matchup. And he also talks crap. He's like Max Holloway esque. And he gets, I don't know, it's just there's an aura about him where no matter what happens or like who's he's, who he's fighting, it's always exciting. And his striking yeah. game is insane. His way he gets out of tough situations is incredible. And he's not afraid to put himself in the fire in order to have success. Like if no, something's not insane. working for him, him. He's so cool. Yeah, like what's your favorite thing about him? Like when you're watching him fight, it's just like I don't even know. He's just like he doesn't quit. No, and exactly. He, yeah, he's just a good fighter. Like it's entertaining to watch. No, I know. He's literally <laughs> just like no matter if he's if his striking's not working, he finds a way to get the fight to yeah. the ground and he finds a way to get ahead on the scorecards no matter the situation. So like that's why I think that he's the most dangerous is because even though he's still young and has a long ways to go in his career, like I just think that no matter he, who he goes against he's just gonna give him hell no matter mm-hmm. what totally and then also it's a 50k check every single time he goes out there so yeah. like everybody's gonna be like they're gonna be lining up to fight him but then at the same time when they're in the hospital after they're like oh i don't really want to fight <laughs> him hospital. was it really worth it but yeah he's that's an absolute funny. killer so yeah, that's why no, i picked sick. him as 135 right? yeah even though he hasn't even fought in the ufc yet but he technically that's has. a good pick for sure yeah and i feel like i haven't talked about him enough no how yeah much i, I like didn't him. even think i'm surprised this is his debut i would have thought it would have been sooner yeah and he's so experienced too for like and he just for not having as many professional fights i feel like he just he fights like a legit top 15 or in the bantamweight division mm-hmm. but okay then for my flyweights let's get to this right freaking now and this is another rant and do we need more of the rants no we don't need any more of the judging rants but We'll go to the. We'll just transition over to the Volkov versus Rosen strike card, which was fantastic last week. I was gonna think since it was an early morning card, I was like, let's just let's just do a episode after. Then I was like, nah, it's all right. Well, I kind of convinced you not to. See, we'll you're just, a bad influence. On well, no, it was just late, and I I said you could do one by yourself. It was like two or three. When it ended, yeah, it was like four. I thought. Oh, it was. Uh, no, yeah, it ended at like two or three. It ended but like then four. we like did something after, and then you wanted to do one later, after we did something. Yeah. And then I was like, it's kind of late. Like, no. why don't we? D-? I said, let's do one tomorrow, and then we ended up not <laughs> doing one. <laughs> All right, ready to go? Would you rather get punched in the stomach? No, would you rather get kicked in the shin by Conor McGregor or Kay. punched in the face by Rose Namajunas? Um, I would rather get punched in the face. By Rose? Yeah. Then kicked in the shin. Man, uh, you see, this is an interesting answer. Wait, here. I don't know. <laughs> because, because you it's Conor McGregor. Yeah. Shins hurt so bad. 
Yeah. But also my face is my only good attribute. That isn't true. <laughs> <laughs> what are you so talking? I don't know. I could. You I would could just take a, a little bit of a I nap or not walk a, for a week. I don't think I would get knocked out. I think I could fight her. Rose, <laughs> she's calling you out. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I'm pretty tough, don't you think? Yeah. You know I'm tough. I know for a fact Rose can put my lights out. 100. You think? She can put. 99. I thought that she did like 9. horrible her last fight. Like she barely even touched the girl all. You see this that whole narrative doesn't fucking matter because we're mortals and they're oh, demigods. Mortal. She's a mortal. Rose is a freaking. No matter what anybody says, no, no matter, matter how what weird anyone says, I don't think is, she's as good as people say. Casual, absolute straight casual comment there. I she's just, fantastic. Every single fight she's been in prior to that last one. That was, last one was horrible. No, and you're not wrong. Did she keep her belt? No, she lost. Girl. Good. But now let's get into this judging rant, okay? No, I'm just kidding. I would get For my out. 125er, that is the scariest. And I don't care what it is. I remember watching him my, his first ever time going up against Hallie and Paiva. I thought he won. He got screwed. But what happened against Jeff Molina? Jeff Molina, he's a cool dude. Like, the way he was ripping on uh people i think people were giving him crap from wearing like the rainbow things on his short the letters on his shorts for lgbtq and was he the, he the one that like he was the he one was, that was talking about yeah people like just need to be decent human beings yeah bro i just can't believe people would crap like and also the tampa bay rays players that don't want to well, the ufc what do you expect their fans are all yeah but also like the tampa bay rays players that didn't want to wear um lgbtq like patches on just no for god way. things like because we're jesus like we, we believe in jesus and we don't believe that's a lifestyle we want to it's like bro you need it it doesn't matter bro if you're like accepting and following if you're like a god who lover jesus, supposedly jesus like you loves should like everyone. love everybody bro yeah. like and then just wear it and then be done with it like it's not i like, get stupid but on to jeff melina jeff melina is a savage but jogus i'm sorry dude jogus Shumagulov when a when if somebody is visually watching this fight and Jeff Molina is walking off to his coaches after hearing a 30-27, Jacques Jumagou have clearly won rounds two and three. So, one would think Jacques gets the dub, but no. Mans <laughs> gets absolutely <laughs> thrashed. I don't care what anybody says. Come at me right now, anywhere. Jogas Jumagulov won that fight. I don't care how close it was. Jogas cracked him on multiple occasions, was able to change levels. And even though Jeff Molina is good, I think that Jogas was pushing the pace the entire time, except in the in the third round. Okay, Jogas was definitely like on his back foot, like circling around the octagon, but he was still landing good shots. And he, I just think he won the fight. Okay, Every, and nothing that Jeff Molina did made me think that it should like sway in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Like I thought Jogas was in control the entire time. And but that being said, like. It just frustrates me to see, like, Jeff Molina, he wins, right? And then gets called out by a hot name like Muhammad Mokayev. And then I'm like, dude, that could be Jogas Shumagulov. Like, I don't know any of their, I don't know, I know, I looked it up and, like, Jogas is following, like, Muhammad Mokayev and stuff. So I don't know if there's, like, any, I don't know if they're friends or anything. Like, I don't know if that happened, but it's just like, dude, that should be Jogas Shumagulov. And also, like, the way Jogas Shumagulov, he is so unbelievably well rounded in, like, everything he does. And he has a decent. Got a great gas tank, super explosive, not afraid to engage with anybody, as we saw. But in the UFC, like, we see he lost to Halian Paiva, he lost to Amir Abazi, beat Jerome Rivera. So he's 1-5 in, in the UFC, but his record does not accurately depict how good he is. And that's what pisses me off, is because this man, even though he is 1-5 in, in the UFC, he easily could have three wins. He could be 3-2. and two. He should have beat Halian Paiva. He should have beat Jeff Molina. He list, lost to Amir Abazi and Manel Cap Baron Square, obviously. Manel Cap put his lights out. But, like, it just goes to show, as, uh, as so many people talk about, like, Brendan Schaub and like uh ariel hawani it's like this is ruining a dude's career mm -hmm. and he could get win money even though he he's i think he's doing fine he has like 300 plus thousand followers on instagram so like even though he is one of five in the oc he definitely has a following and he makes probably a crap ton of money but it's just like i don't want to see him out of the ufc because yeah. in my opinion he is the dangerous most dangerous dude anybody can go against just because he can give anybody a run for their money like you try to take him down that's going to be hell and then like if you want to stand in the middle of the octagon and throw with him like if he connects your lights are going out so it's like a matter of who's going to connect first so i mean yeah. even though 
I just am like the biggest advocate for like I don't want him leaving. I don't know what the talks I'm are the biggest in the advocate. UFC. Like I just don't want him out of the UFC because I think he's a great addition to the flyweight division and like any new up and comer. Like if you have to face Jalgas, I feel like that is a good indicator of like where you're at. Like if you can beat him, that's sick. But it's like I just don't want him gone because I love watching him fight and I don't know. There's just something about the, him that it just rubs me the wrong way that a judge, those people can just not even. They, they can just take a nap for 15 minutes and then pick a fu- pick a winner. Like, do 30-27 when Jogs clearly won rounds two and three. I it's just like, don't bro, what understand are you doing? how... So, like, that's my little rant on that. It's like, you have a big name like Muhammad Kaib calling out Jeff Molina, but I don't think Jeff Molina won. It's like, that could be Jogs Jumagulov, but instead Jogs is one of five in the UFC. Or, yeah, one of five in the UFC or whatever. And it's like, dude. Or one of four in the UFC. It's like, oh, my God. But he's still my <laughs> unranked 125er, bro. Okay. And then I'll just... Are we also discussing the Saturday's card? Yeah, it, really fast. Okay. And then my <laughs> then, then my girl's bantamweight. I'll just run through these really fast. My girl's bantamweight, Joni, Josiani Nunes, who beat Bay Malecki in her UFC debut. And then she just got another dub. Watch out for her at 135. She's a little fire plug. She can put your lights out. She's little for the 135-pound division. but like, What's her name? Uh, Josiani Nunes. And she's a killer, dude. Oh, and then is Aaron, Amanda's sister? Hmm? <laughs> Dude, there's probably some freaking relation probably at some <laughs> is point. she brazilian um yeah oh that's cool and then my flyweight mm-hmm. she was on she was the first fight of the night i was literally watching this at 10 a.m with my uh not with my sister my girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> but aaron blanchfield dude the way she beat miranda maverick and then now jj aldrich i think she's the most she's um, the scariest flyweight girl you have to watch for really her. it was interesting though because like watching her against miranda maverick she didn't miss a single takedown um against miranda maverick I, and i think this was like her third fight in the ufc yeah she's she beat sarah alpar now miranda maverick now jj aldrich but like she has she didn't miss a takedown in the ufc but then was struggling against jj and then like finally started to like close distance a little bit started getting more comfortable on the feet and then sunk in that standing high elbow like guillotine which was wild but she overcame adversity for sure but i was just like interested by the whole entire because i know jj aldrich she's a really good grappler but like the way i saw aaron blanchfield it's like dude the way you took down miranda maverick i feel like you could take down anybody in the division but it, it showed really good it just showed how well-rounded she is. She's able to overcome adversity and like still strike and land good shots and stuff. She's not just like one-dimensional where she's going to look to take you down the entire time, even though I think she was struggling to take JJ down, but I was just really pumped to see Aaron Blanchfield get another dub because I thought really highly of her after she um, beat Miranda Maverick because so many people think Miranda is going to become a champion one day. But yeah, dude, that's my 125-er girl that scariest, unranked, and then uh, also... Cheyenne Vlismus at 115. There's a ton of 115ers that I could have picked, but like I looked up Cheyenne and she apparently some personal problems. I don't know if she's going to return in 2022, but she had mm-hmm. a great after she lost to Montserrat Gutierrez or Ruiz or whatever. Montserrat, I forget her name. <laughs> her last name doesn't matter. <laughs> um, she's like on a two fight win streak now. She go on like fight of the night and then had a crazy knockout. Um, also, so Cheyenne Vlismus at 115. She's great, but okay. <sighs> that's enough of that dude okay ready so we're gonna we're grinding we're only at we're at 28 okay it's okay it's okay take your time all right so <laughs> here we go <laughs> so we've got the main thing that i want to talk about that i literally am kicking myself for is because oh, no. what I wanted to talk about Moff Sarvaloy versus Dan Ige, okay? My dad, he put money on it. I was like, why are you going to put money on it? Because the- Moff Sarvaloy, dude. He already did? No, this was last. This is- Remember, I told him oh, not to. Yeah. And then Moff Sar goes out there and just some, yeah. changes poor Dan's face. I love Dan Ige so much, but this was a terrible matchup for him. Moff Sarvaloy, I'm going to say this right freaking now. And nobody in the featherweight division is going to beat him. And that is a fact on God. Like, if you put Mavsar in against Volkanovski right now, Alexander has a hell of a time. And so what I wanted to do right now, because he talked about in this thing is, in his post-fight press conference, he's tired of fighting no names. Yeah. For sure. That's that's a fact, dude. Yeah. And he is going to become next champion. And you know how many people are doubting that? You want to know how many people are... Guess how many people are doubting that he'll become champion. A lot? Zero. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's just she's on her phone. It's Joe. No, but. I thought that you meant like you're on his side and other people oh, no. aren't. Well, I mean, 
probably other people aren't like they because probably think he's, he's getting bit. all these known names so why but he's Hamza out your mind exactly so here we go with this you look a little flush you good yeah dude i'm fine <laughs> I, I like watered my hair. It doesn't even matter. But I moths are. My hair now. Well, yeah, because I look. I had bed head, so. <laughs> he sticks his head in the shower and he just turns it on, and then he's like. Is oh, that an uncommon thing to do? And then he just. Okay. Dries it. <laughs> Sorry, Bree. Who's it's ready secret. to lay out the Mobstar Voyev <laughs> title run picture? Okay, because I don't believe he's one fight away from the title. I think he's gonna take a little bit, just given the fact that there's some absolute sav boys like Calvin Cater versus Josh Emmett and yair and brian ortega fighting and chan sung jung's up there so here is my prediction for the future of mav sarvoyev ready all right let's hear it number one who's ranked above mav sarvoyev who has probably some of the best ground game what is mav sar's number one thing to do when things aren't going well for him on the feet and also just to change levels and just absolutely make the, his opponents want to piss piss their pants because they don't know what's coming after him but like i think that bryce mitchell who's ranked number nine versus mofsar blue who's current ranked number 10 bryce mitchell i don't know if there's anything lined up i don't know if he has any injuries right now i'm just speculating like let's make this she right now because the way bryce mitchell beat edson barboza who is ufc hall of famer Bryce Mitchell versus Mavsar Voyev is going to be one of the craziest fights of all time because if you're gonna, if if Mavsar takes Bryce Mitchell down, Bryce is gonna sink in like a twister joke or something, and then like <laughs> Mavsar is gonna get back back to to his feet. And also Bryce Mitchell's boxing is insane because I'm pretty sure he sat down Edson Barboza, dude. So, mm-hmm. like, what's gonna happen here? It's gonna be crazy because Mavsar is gonna try to take. So, uh, no, he, actually, scratch everything I just said right there. <laughs> what's even more crazy than? anything is Bryce Mitchell is going to try to take Mavsar Voyev to the ground. And that is probably like <laughs> Mavsar on his back. Thing. Like, I don't even think that he's ever been on his back, honestly. Like, Do I don't it? know. I want to take a look at the statistics, but I mean, I don't know if Mavsar has ever like been taken down his entire life because <laughs> <laughs> dude, the dude looks like freaking Armand Sarukian, bro. He's absolutely stacked. He needs to start lifting for sure. Dude, he's got the, he's got the most impressive chest I've seen in the UFC. That- you think i think one of top he's top five he's top five chess in the UFC. okay okay i mean he's top five physiques what is the guy that i said looks like superman armand sarugian he has a top five yeah he's got top five legs imagine taking kellen's legs and then fusing together and then multiplying by five no i'm just kidding (laughs) <laughs> but okay mobstar versus bryce mitchell i think that is phase one to mob we're gonna call this mobstar title run project. will it actually go this way mobstar title run this is the project we've got here you go ufc you're welcome <sighs> okay mobstar versus <laughs> bryce that's what we've got next mobstar he wants arnold allen he wants to catch that little englishman he wants that guy he wants that dude because apparently he's been calling him out arnold doesn't want anything to do with him i mean that's not that's actually so far from the truth arnold is an absolute freaking killer dude like everywhere his uppercut is nasty try it in ufc4 bro arnold he just went in there and freaking cracked dan hooker dude but yeah he's beat sadiq youssef nick lentz and uh dan hooker so like this arnold allen fight would be perfect and also like if Mavsar beat Bryce Mitchell and then they did like Mavsar versus Arnold Allen, Arnold Allen, he's done enough to the point where if he beats Mavsar, he's up for that title shot. But then like if Mavsar wins, it's tough, especially given the fact that like if Max beats Volk, who knows what the hell is going to happen with that? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, is Volk going to want another fight? Is just, are we just going to see Max, Volk, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? 10? You know, what are we going to see here? What are we going to see <laughs> here? If Yair beats Brian Ortega, Yair's got to be up there for the title too. Yair. Yair. But okay. So Mavsar versus Arnold Allen, that would be a crazy fight. I don't know what the hell is going to happen in that. But if Mavsar somehow gets that dub, just given the fact that he's young and stuff, like I think he's going to fight one Benefit more big boy. I think, gonna, I think he's going to have to fight another big boy. Whether that be Cater, whether that be Emmett, if he loses to Cater, like, whether that be the loser of Brian or t- like this is a long ways away. We're talking like mid next year that we'd be or like even like two years from now that we'd probably be talking this just even the fact that who knows how frequently he'll be fighting. But yeah, I think that he's got to win three more. It's that three is the golden number here. 
because there's just so much cluster at the top of the division, so many guys, and it's just like blah blah blah. And especially if like if <laughs> Volk wants to go up a weight class, you know, and fight, that's just gonna put things out further. But it also could be good though if Volk wants to go, like if he beats if Volk beats Max, which I don't know what'll happen, but like mm-hmm. if that does happen, that could set up an interim title shot, which could drop it to two, you know. That could drop it in an interim title shot for Mob Starter 2. So that's my whole entire kind of plan here. It's either two or three fights, but it's going to have to be against some heavy hitters. He's not going to like beat a guy that he's not going to like beat a Bryce Mitchell and then get a title shot. He's not going to like just simply beat Arnold Allen. He's going to have to beat somebody that's like fought for the title Mm -hmm. or fought a guy that's fought like a champion yeah in order to get there mm-hmm. so that's my title picture i think that mavsar he is going to run through everybody but it's a matter of time and we have seen that he does he can get clicked like against hakim duwadu but that is my prediction i think that he's just fantastic phenomenal unworldly like he is so good everywhere no holes in the game whatsoever dude but mm-hmm. that being said like um one thing that i did want to talk about and we'll get into the pro Hoshka card here really quickly i just it just really came to my mind is i was playing ufc4 and i just wanted to get at anybody who's watching their thoughts because like i really do who who do you think if i was to ask you right now who do you think could beat charles Oliveira, like a fighter right now keep that on the ground though. i don't want to bang it you can take it out. You can take the mic out. It doesn't make a noise. Um, I don't know because I honestly don't think Connor would beat him. No. And so I don't know who else could. Yeah. Because well, there's a lot of guys above Connor in the rankings, but mm. I feel like that's didn't he say he wanted to fight Connor next? Yeah. He called him out. But I don't know who I would see. I don't want to see him fight Dustin. I don't Very really. Beat him. I don't want to see. Who else is up high in the rankings? Who's top five in his class? He just beat everybody. So, oh yeah, because he's number one. Yeah. Well, he's beat all the top guys. Well, because he's the only guy that he hasn't. So fought. he would have to change his his weight class. He hasn't fought. He the only guy that's in the top five that he hasn't beat is uh, Islam, I think. Then I guess that. Yeah, because he beat Poirier, he beat um, Gaethje, Gaethje, and he beat Chandler. Yeah, because so he's technically number one right now. Because the I can't th- th- title's I know vacant, that yeah. was so stupid, but I can't believe that Chandler fight was insane. But I think it would be Islam then. That's really the only other one I could see. Yeah, not him, not beating Charles, but that being a good fight. Are they talking about doing that? Yeah, they want to do that. But can I just say something right now? Like, okay, it is it's absolutely wild to think about, but. When I think about guys beating Charles Oliveira, okay, and this is basically Kellen learning the MMA math doesn't make any sense, but there's just some matchups that are interesting, and we have to take into account that some guys are going to be entering their prime, which equals man strength, which equals different level of just overall beastness when it comes to being in the UFC, you know? Like, I can imagine Charles Oliveira beating any lightweight that the UFC throws at him. But I can also, like, see... I could see Islam Akasha beating him, you know? like. But I can also see Charles Oliveira over, overcoming adversity. Mm-hmm. But get ready for this, okay? Let me lay out one of the craziest pictures in one of Kellen's dreamscapes of all time, all right? What do we have coming up pretty soon? We have Volk versus Max Holloway 3. Er, yeah, you just want him to yeah. fight Max. Ding dong. Okay. Max has beat him because Charles was at 145, as we know, and he got an injury, and Max has a dub over him, all right? Say Max beats Alexander Volkanovsky, and Volkanovsky, I don't know, Max moves up to the 155, all right? Just for a big money fight because Max deserves it. Charles is going to be down for that fight because he wants to get the fight against Max back, all right? I'm saying right now, I'm not saying every a lot of things on UFC 4, like, are wrong but i'm just saying that i think max holloway you, i don't you see you beat Oliveira on ufc4 using max yeah and i'm not just i i'm saying right now dude max holloway man's showed off so m- much of his abilities against yeah your rodriguez scrambles take down defense against volk take down defense against like yeah your uh again yeah against volk 
um, good scrambles, like I said, against a year, I'm like stumbling over my words, but I really think that if the fight goes to the ground, Max Holloway is going to show why he's the goat, why he's the freaking goat, dude. And also on the feet, it's hard to put Max Holloway away. Like his chin is legendary granite, baby. It's absolute Hawaiian coconut, like palm tree steel. That's what I'm saying right now, dude. You can't put this man away. If Dustin Poirier can't put you away, I'm telling you right now, Max Holloway staying awake in that fight. I don't see him getting knocked to the ground. I'm not saying that Max can beat guys like Justin Gaethje, Islam Makachev, Michael Chandler. I'm not saying any of this. I'm just saying when it comes to He can just to beat a the one, guy who would beat all of them. I'm just saying when it comes to <laughs> matchups, and when we lock two absolute savages in there at 155, especially Max entering his prime at 30 years old, who knows when he's one, 31, big 32. Big man strength, this Kellen. 31, 32, it. when he gets big man strength, big boy, when he gets that, uh, he gets that um, pork in him. <laughs> no, no, what, what, dude, what's it called, bro? Kalua pork? No, bro, I don't even know. I don't even know what I was going to say. Pa- but he, pow? Huh? Poo? Poi. Poi. <laughs> he's that poi strength, bro his big boy boy man strength i'm just saying when i lock charles in with max i don't see a world in which max loses i don't know if i'm crazy for that's that. uh called being a biased fan but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> because you have faith and that's what matters i just think that max he might get that he might once he hits that prime he could put on the necessary muscle I love you max where because when he came in against dustin poirier and fought for the interim title he didn't look like he put the weight in in the right places. But man's is thick now. His legs are man's thick. Man's is thick. He's so I, that's just food for thought, okay? That's just what I think right now. And be, it, I don't know. Just it is what it is. Just as Max would it, say. Okay? That's, just sit on I think Max is the only guy in the UFC right now that can beat Charles Oliveira. Okay. Okay. So now we're it's kind of psycho, but it's fine. All right, now we're on to the man I interviewed, Kiri Prohashka. He's literally Glover the Texera. main card. He's the fighting for the light heavyweight title. And you freaking interviewed him. Like, do you not realize how sick that is? I interviewed this guy. Go check that out. It was like two years ago. Go link it in the description below. Go check it out. Kellen literally interviewed and that this guy, and now he is the main event. He's going on the to card. be fighting for like, the is light that not the coolest heavyweight thing? championship of the world. It's pretty sweet. You need to give yourself more credit because that is freaking sick. No, he, I got to give him credit because he's really well, nice. No, we have that too. But like he, it was hard to interview someone who doesn't speak English as their native language. And mm-hmm. you did a great job with that, that diversity. Like, yeah. you know. No, but he, he's just an overall cool dude. Yeah, he was really nice. That's yeah. super cool. But overall, this card is like hella stacked. Was that the one that Jonah sat on? No, no, that was Gustavo Lopez. Oh, okay. All the guys I've interviewed have been really nice. So nice. Yeah. That's why they've taken them because they're nice guys. Mm, yeah. Dan Argetta is really nice. Um, Gustavo's hella nice. That guy, Trey Singulkis, is really nice. Yes. He's, it's only a matter of time before he makes his He's debut. In the UFC. And, then, and then you interviewed John Morgan. The, John Morgan. The, literally, like the Deary. top interviewer during mm-hmm. press conferences. Yeah. And he was so nice. I interviewed the Lego dude who's cool, Jared Jacobs. Yep. We need to get an interview back on. Yeah. That's what I want to do during the summertime is get Try more. Because I'll have out. more time to do yeah. that. Yeah. More time to prepare. Because I like to be prepared when I, I don't want to half ass it. When I and go we're into trying to get Kellen an internship at the UFC next summer, so anything we can do to prepare, let us know. Back on God. Stop saying All right. This card is really stacked. We got Dana Betgari on here versus Kyung Ho Kang. I'm looking forward to Dana. He's coming back quick after his knockout loss to uh, Chris Gutierrez, but we'll, we'll see it. We'll see how it rolls. I think that he's got he's obviously got the one-punch knockout power to take anybody out, but then Andre Fialio. I mean, versus Jake Matthews, that's going to be probably fight of the night just because, like I've said, Andre Fialio, he's one of the craziest. He's in front of the, I know. <laughs> Dude, they, they all struggle, like Daniel Cormier and all of them. I was like, is it just Fialio? And then I think where he's from, I think you get the Ilu. They always, it's like, the Portugal. say it's the funny. Fialio. So you got to add the Ilu at the end. But he beat Miguel Baeza, lost to Michelle Pajero, who's a killer. But as we said before, like in the past on a prior episode this guy is absolute killer top prospect we've seen in 2022 so far then Sung Woo Choi versus Josh Koulibau Koulibau is just an absolute scrapper and Sung Woo Choi lost Alex Caceres but he's such a fast striker and then Jacob Malkoon versus Brendan Allen this is baller fight Brendan Allen's coming off that dub over um 
Sam Alvey of Malcoon is obviously a fantastic fighter. I think Brendan Allen, I mean, at 185, he's pound for pound probably one of the most skilled. It's just a matter of him putting it all together. I think mm-hmm. his, his, like, like his ceiling is super duper high. It's just a matter of him just, I don't know, dude. He just needs to be smarter on the feet and not get popped as much as it. I don't know. Obviously, I'm not a mixed martial artist. I don't know how to <laughs> freaking, I don't know what to tell him. I'm just saying that I, when he fights, what if you he has a coach? The that would be sick if you went there and you ended up coaching a guy. What would I tell him? No, I was going to say. What would I tell him? I'd be like, all right, dude. That would it. be a true story. The man who's never fought in his life. <laughs> no one would be signing up. <laughs> no one would be lining up. I want you to can't train me. <laughs> you train me. He's never who's never fought or been <laughs> on a mat. Well, no, that's a lie. You've done some training. Yeah, I did jujitsu for like two weeks. I wanted to kill myself because <laughs> it hurts so bad. Because I, ha- I got two surgeries on my elbow or whatever. And then I get guys putting me in arm bars. Like huge guys that are just cranking. I'm just like. <laughs> you should try doing it again though bro no <laughs> i need to start stretching if i wanted to do that the way they contort their bodies and stuff it's crazy it's underrated for sure and then mm, ramzan and me fighting jack della Ma- madalena that's gonna be a good one we're here a bunch of rainvers manel cap manel cop big fight for you <laughs> um jing wali versus viana and jaycheck fantastic if you haven't seen the new mype sports you on and jay check is cringe mype sports that video is fantastic that's gonna be great that's probably gonna be fight of the night on the main card valentina mm-hmm. versus tyla santos valentina i expect her to just show her dominance Annihilate. but the last thing i want to talk about dude at the main event this is the last thing we'll talk about here pro hotchka okay just kidding here pro hotchka <laughs> It cannot go. Like, he is so unbelievably important to the light heavyweight division. I'm going to tell you why right now, okay? So, like, I'm not taking anything against from Glover Teixeira or Jan Blachowicz or any of those guys. But I can say pretty surely that the light heavyweight division was a little bit dry there for a minute. Like, after John Jones took out everybody, John Jones mm-hmm. steps away, it just becomes an open free-for-all, basically. Mm-hmm. And there's really... It just goes to show how great those guys are. Like, it just goes to show how great John Jones is because John Jones made these guys look like... Piece they just wa- they just weren't on his level, obviously. But then, like, it's great to see Jan Blachowicz and Glover Teixeira get their shine or whatever. But when you look at Glover Teixeira and Jan Blachowicz, when you're comparing them to a guy like... Even though it's it's really not fair to say, but like when you're comparing him to John Jones, it's like John Jones is the standard of light heavyweight champion that you expect. So like when a guy like Glover Teixeira or Jan Blahovich are the champion, you're like, God, you know that it could be, they're not the best yeah, in the world. It could like be better. I don't want them to. I don't, I, I don't want to sound mean or anything, but it's like there's room you, for improvement. Yeah, no, but it's like yeah, no, exactly. It's like, like you you've know seen that they're the, you've seen better. the best, and so like, but when you get a guy like Harry Prohoshkin there who throws spinning crap, absolute haymakers. And the great thing about him, very similar to Charles Oliveira and the fact that when he gets rocked or stunned, it it doesn't matter. You don't think that he's out of a fight at any time because he'll recover, he'll get a second win, and he'll come and just take your head off with a spinning back elbow mm-hmm. or something. And he just, you, what are you going to do? Like, like, I just don't see a lot of roots for Glover to share to beat him. And here, Prashka is just so exciting. There's no way. And I think that it's just perfect that we have a guy like this because he's so well-rounded at everything he does and he when you look at here prohacha he's a freaking viking man and it's like when you <laughs> when is. when john jones comes back you have faith that a guy like here prohacha can defend his could, title could actually yeah he has the attributes yeah to act, like he's just a believable young athletic light heavyweight champion totally. and like yeah that's why i think that he's just essential and just couldn't have came at a better time and i think it's great glover and jan blovich got their shine and stuff but i really think this is the passing of the torch bro this is here that's Prohoshka's, a good way to put it yeah. this is here prohoshka's time and it's mago my uncle live's time it's this new influx of guys even like anthony liar hart smith like even though Magomed and Anthony are fighting. It's just like, I think this is a great time. And we got guys like Yamhel Hill, mm-hmm. Jamal Hill, Jimmy Crute, all these young Yamhel. dudes that are, <laughs> that are coming up, bro. And I'm just, it's a you're great time for light heavyweight division. It's a new, fresh start. And I think that if you're a Brahacha, I really believe he's going to get that dub. I I'm think that it just is a 
representation of this new time. And then John Jones, when he comes back, the world is his oyster because he can go and, and fight, fight a new, new guy, guys. new blood, um, like Magomed Nikolaev or freaking Kiri Prohoshka, or he can go up and fight guys like freaking Tom Asma, yeah, tied to Ivasa, all these sick Francis Ngannou, a serial gone. It's just it's gonna be so sick. So that's why I think that like I my prediction right now. You think Kiri's gonna win? I think Kiri's definitely gonna win. But yeah, that's why I just wanted to get that kind of off my chest. Is I think that Kiri is super essential Good right now to the ufc light heavyweight division but yeah i'm so pumped for this card and it's gonna be good it's gonna be a good one baby gonna be good thank you guys so much for listening and yeah we'll be back on a more consistent basis hopefully next week but don't count on it